Retro Ghetto. Hi everybody, welcome back to the Retro Ghetto. So I've been hunting video games for a long time long time way before the inception of this channel and i've been out hunting most days for i don't know 10 years or so whether that be video game shops charity shops car boot sales and anywhere in between that i think i can get my hands on video games to feed this collecting addiction and today i want to highlight 10 games in particular which i think are very very difficult if not impossible to find out in the quote unquote wild and these are games that are not necessarily expensive, they're just very uncommon. Games that I've only ever seen once myself or stumbled across a random eBay listing once upon a time and I really wanted to highlight them today. Now what I'm not going to do is pull a retro game off the shelf because it's 2024. I could pretty much pull any retro video game off from these shelves and the chances are you'd be hard pressed to find it out and about in the wild today. So we're going to concentrate more so on systems that are still quite plentiful. Systems that you still see a lot of games for out and about when you're on game hunts. And we're going to kick this video off with Williams Pinball Classic. This is a 2011 pinball simulation game and it features various real life pinball machines that you yourself can play at home. Well, at least you would be able to if you could find a copy of this because yeah for some reason this game has become very very uncommon indeed there are currently no copies available at cex and i could only actually find one copy on ebay and that was up for 60 pounds so yeah uh good luck finding a copy of this one right okay so next up i want to talk about yeah, this game yeah i know i said no retro so how about this game assault suits vulcan this is weirdly a 2005 re-release on the PlayStation 2 of Super Nintendo's 1992 mech-suited platformer Cybernator. Now I'm a huge fan of playing 2D games on what is predominantly 3D systems and it would seem I'm not the only one because I know from first hand experience how difficult it is to find this game. I had a save search um, on my CEX app for I don't know about two years or so, got tired of it never coming to stock and eventually had to take to eBay to pick up a copy of this one. I have checked and there are currently five copies on eBay ranging from £40 to £90 but yeah this is a fun time, it's a difficult game but definitely worth picking up if you can find one. So it feels like a bit of a cheat code putting a Wii U game on this list because at this moment in time there's a lot of the Wii U library which is very difficult to find. A lot of these games were printed in quite low quantities or some of them are actually only available um, throughout other PAL territories such as Australia so obviously here in the UK it's going to be difficult to find a copy of but this game I wanted to highlight simply because it was available at the time it is one of them games which is available on other systems you can actually pick this up for like I think four pounds on the PlayStation 4 but yeah for some reason nobody bought this on the Wii U and I know firsthand just how difficult this game is to get a hold of because for the last, I don't know, six months or so, every time I go on a game hunt with my friend Kev, he's been asking every store owner, every stall holder at any events that we might go to, if they have a copy of this game, and they never have. And he needed this as one of his last to complete his full Wii U set. And that is Teslagrad. So as well as the PS4, it's also available on PlayStation 3 and Switch, but yeah, seemingly nobody bought it on the Wii U. I mean, nobody bought a Wii U, to be fair. <laughs> this is a 2013 side-scrolling puzzle platformer, and... It's just become very difficult to find. There's only four copies of it on eBay right now, ranging from 140 to 240. So just be aware of this one if you are thinking about full setting for the Wii U system, which I would imagine is a very difficult task in 2024. If this is a game which you think looks interesting, yeah, pick it up on another system. It's cheap and plentiful on the PlayStation 4. Don't waste your time with this one just because it's in a blue box. Right, okay, this next one is probably the game I get the most messages about. I get a lot of comments of people asking me about this game, where I got it from, how I found it, where they can find a copy, and the truth is I don't really have any answers. For me personally, it was a random listing that was on eBay. I've not seen a copy of it before or after, whether that be online or out and about on a game hunt, and that is 50 Cent's Bulletproof. What's mine's is mine's. What's yours is mine's. I run these streets. This whole city is mine. I never understand how people forget that. So this is just a six pound game with hundreds of copies in the stock at CEX, but it is not, of course, the standard copy that I'm talking about when it comes to the year 2000s action game. This is the sleeved version, and what a beautiful sleeve it is. Uh, I just love this box. I think it's one of the best in my collection. I love that sort of like red foil that they've used on the font, and what I love about this as well is it's very raw, very rugged, a bit like the game, a bit like the artist himself, because 
most of these kind of collector's editions are to say things like complete edition or ultimate edition. Not this game. <laughs> Limited edition box. <laughs> I mean, just call an orange an orange, right? This is a limited edition box. It's genuinely one of my favourite pieces in the collection. I absolutely love this. Being a big video game fan and a big hip hop fan, this is, yeah, um, perfect for myself and my collection. And I wish I could help you. I wish I could point you in the right direction as to where you could find a copy of this, but there's just nothing online about it. Um, but weirdly, this isn't actually the rarest release for this game. Um, you can actually find out there an actual bulletproof vest that straps using velcro over the game itself i don't think that ever got a uk release i've never seen one on these shores i live in hope but until then this will do the nintendo wii sold over a hundred million units worldwide and the dragon ball franchise is currently sat at 15th on the all-time top franchise list amassing over 24 billion since its 1988 inception so you would think that a dragon ball game on a nintendo wii would be widely available and pu public knowledge at this point. Well, enter Dragon Ball's Revenge of King Piccolo. It's actually a very fun game, a 2009 released action adventure beat em up platformer. And if you watch my channel, you will know about this game because I've discussed it quite a few times. I initially mentioned it on a video games to invest in episode a couple of years back. And I had so many comments from people seeing that episode saying to me, how did I not know about this game and has this game flown under the radar for so many years? Um, yeah, very strange one, a bit of an anomaly really given how big the franchise is and the fact that it's a very good game. Its graphics still stand up to this day, which I can't say about too many Wii games. So it's one of them uncommon games, which is actually a good one. And if you are interested, there are actually two copies in stock at CX currently. I believe it's currently there for £28. And the fact that this is the only physical copy of this game I've ever seen, if you want it, I want to hang around, I'd grab one of them sooner rather than later because yeah, uh, this is definitely worthy of being in any Wii collection. And sticking with the Nintendo Wii, this next game is one that I wanted to highlight because it it's a very good demonstration of how I learned about a lot of these games and how I learned that they're actually uncommon. I was just flicking through a CEX store one day and I just came across a game that I sure thought to myself, I've never seen this copy before. And I picked it up, lo and behold, it was the only copy in stock in the country. There wasn't many listings on eBay and I thought, well, it's got to be worth picking it up. And I'm glad I did. And that is a copy of Guilty Gear. Guilty Gear is a long running fighting game from Arc System Works. And Guilty Gear XX Accent Core is an uncommon game on the system with less than 15 copies in stock currently. However, enter Guilty Gear XX Accent Core Plus. <laughs> An even rarer game. Um, there are actually a few copies in stock, I've checked, but it's £24 more than the original version of the game at £28. So, yeah, I don't know if this is worth picking up or not, but it would seem that it's quite a popular one uh, amongst fighting game fans because you've struggled to find a copy of this on the PlayStation 2 as well. But yeah, I just wanted to highlight this one because of the way I found it. And in this day and age, we've all got eBay on our phones, we've all got the CX app on our phones. Anything you're unsure about, take a look. It'll take you 30 seconds to realise if something's uncommon or worth picking up or not. And I'm glad I did so with a copy of this. Speaking of games I've never seen before, I recently attended the Doncaster Retro Gaming Market where I added some very nice and expensive pieces to my collection. However, my favourite find of the day was a game that cost me just £3 and that was Xbox 360's The Bourne Conspiracy. Which in itself, this High Moon Studios developed action game is not a difficult one to find. This, however is a difficult one to find. This, as you can see, was exclusive to HMV. I've never seen a copy before or since. There's none currently available on eBay. And yeah, it's a strange one. It comes with exclusive music from Paul Oakenfold. So it includes a CD and DVD. Um, but yeah, let me know if you've ever found this one out and about on your travels. And again, wanted to highlight this one because it's the epitome of this video. Things don't have to be expensive to be uncommon or rare. I found some fantastic stuff at the Doncaster Games Market, but this one probably gave me the most joy, right? And that's where I'm at as a collector. I just love finding the weird, obscure things that I didn't know existed. And after years and years of hunting and collecting, the fact that I can still find things that I didn't know about just shows why I really love this hobby. Okay, so for this next one, I want to take you back to a clip from an episode that I made 10 months ago. I can only describe this next game as a bit of an anomaly and that's because it's somewhat uncommon with just 13 copies in stock and it's very cheap by today's standards at just £3 and that is Xbox 360's Fatal Inertia. This is a 2008 hover car racing game and from what I can tell it never actually got a physical release on the PlayStation 3 so if you do want a physical copy of this one you'll be forced to go down the Xbox 360 route. This game contains over 51 different courses, over 6 different environments and there are 4 main ship types, all of which have very unique qualities to their racing abilities. 
If you've ever played games like Wipeout or going back a bit further, F-Zero, you know what to expect with this game. From everything that I've looked at and people I know that have played this game, apparently it's good fun. So for £3, with just so few copies in stock and you can't get a physical on PlayStation 3, you can't go wrong. I tried to tell you. <laughs> this game is now sitting at £38 at CEX but is never in stock and it's absolutely ridiculous what this is selling for currently on eBay. So yeah, let me know if you took advice from myself 10 months ago and if you were able to pick up a copy of this game when it was very, very cheap because... The price of this now is absolutely ridiculous and um, yeah, one of many examples of Xbox 360 games which are currently going through the roof. This next one I've put on the list just to raise a little bit of awareness because it's the sort of game that people can overlook. If you could see this at a car boot or a charity shop, you might think, nah, not worth picking up. Well, it definitely is. And that is Pro Evolution Soccer 2018 on the Xbox 360. This is the last instalment of the football franchise on the Xbox 360, which in itself is crazy, considering that Pro Evo came out in the years 2015, 16, 17 and 18 on the newer Xbox One. I recently completed my full 360 Pro Evolution Soccer set because, yeah, nostalgia. This takes me back to a time of sitting around with my friends in somebody's house, not really doing much productive, killing brain cells and all being generally unfavourable to each other to do anything to put the other person off and make sure they lose the game. But when I look back, just yeah, absolutely fantastic memories with this one and the whole Pro Evolution Soccer franchise. With both Pro Evolution Soccer and FIFA being no more, I do think that these are games that a lot of people are going to have memories that resonate with going forwards and I only see them being more collectible, especially this one which... I mean, I don't know who was still buying Pro Evolution Soccer 2018 uh, for the 360 at this point, but yeah, there's not many copies of this available in stock. And when I bought this, it was just £18. It subsequently jumped up to £28 in a very short period of time. So if you are interested in buying this one, completing your Pro Evo set or your 360 set, grab this one sooner rather than later. And finally, I want to talk about a £4 Nintendo Wii game, and that is Okami. A beautiful game which deserves a beautiful sleeve cover and that's exactly what this is. I mean just look at it. Being a big video game sleeve collector I could have picked from so many to highlight on this video but I wanted to highlight this one simply because it's another one of those that I've never seen in person except for this copy. I randomly found this on a listing on eBay and again from doing a bit of investigative work and looking at a price tag that was attached to one of these online I believe this was a HMV exclusive. Given that this game was also released on the PlayStation 2, I'm not sure how many copies of it sold on the Wii. And I'm certainly not sure how many copies of it sold on the Wii at HMV in order to get this fantastic sleeve. So yeah, one that you'll be very hard pressed to find, but well worth it if you can track one down because it's an absolutely stunning, stunning sleeve cover, well worthy of a stunning game. And there you have it, 10 games I don't think you'll find out in the wild. Hopefully I'm wrong, hopefully you guys can go out, prove me wrong or find a copy, but if nothing else, you'll be more equipped now to know to look out for some of these titles when you are out and about on your hunts. I also want to give a big shout out to Access Area 6, who inspired this video. He put out something similar a few weeks back. I'll make sure to link that in the description below, so go and check out his channel whilst you're there. And more so than ever, I want to hear from you guys. This isn't just YouTuber talk to get you to drop a comment to somehow boost the algorithm and get the world to see this video. I just genuinely want to know what are some of the craziest and rarest finds that you guys have had out in the wild. So make sure you let me know in the comment section below. I've got so many video games, I could easily do another one, two, three or four of these videos. So if you've enjoyed this one, let me know via the like button and we can potentially do another one of these going forwards. But as always, play your games. Keep it retro. Thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next one in a bit. Retro ghetto. <laughs>